Turkey is a critical ally. Turkey is an important part of Europe. And Turkey and the United States must stand together and work together to overcome the challenges of our time. You know, this morning, I had the great privilege of visiting the tomb of your extraordinary founder of your republic. And I was deeply impressed by this beautiful memorial to a man who did so much to shape the course of history. But it is also clear that the greatest monument to Ataturk's life is not something that can be cast in stone and marble. His greatest legacy is Turkey's strong, vibrant, secular democracy. And that is the work that this assembly carries on today. The ties among our people have deepened as well, and more and more Americans of Turkish origin live and work and succeed within our borders. And as a basketball fan, I've even noticed that Hedo Turgulu and Mehmet Okur have got some pretty good basketball games. So, the United States and Turkey have not always agreed on every issue. And that's to be expected. No two nations do. But we have stood together through many challenges over the last 60 years. And because of the strength of our alliance and the endurance of our friendship, both America and Turkey are stronger and the world is more secure. Now, our two democracies are confronted by an unprecedented set of challenges, an economic crisis that recognizes no borders, extremism that leads to the killing of innocent men and women and children, strains on our energy supply and a changing climate, the proliferation of the world's deadliest weapons, and the persistence of tragic conflict. These are the great tests of our young century. And the choices that we make in the coming years will determine whether the future will be shaped by fear or by freedom, by poverty or by prosperity, by strife or by a just, secure, and lasting peace. This much is certain. No one nation can confront these challenges alone. And all nations have a stake in overcoming them. That is why we must listen to one another and seek common ground. That is why we must build on our mutual interests and rise above our differences. We are stronger when we act together. That is the message that I have carried with me throughout this trip to Europe. Every challenge that we face is more easily met if we tend to our own democratic foundation. And this work is never over. That's why, in the United States, we recently ordered the prison at Guantanamo Bay closed. That's why we prohibited, without exception or equivocation, the use of torture. All of us have to change. And sometimes change is hard. And when we consider the challenges before us on issue after issue, we share common goals. In the Middle East, we share the goal of a lasting peace between Israel and its neighbors. And let me be clear, the United States strongly supports the goal of two states, Israel and Palestine, living side by side in peace and security. That is a goal shared by Palestinians, Israelis, and people of goodwill around the world. That is a goal that the parties agreed to in the roadmap and at Annapolis. That is a goal that I will actively pursue as President of the United States. Make no mistake, though, Iraq, Turkey, and the United States face a common threat from terrorism. That includes the al-Qaeda terrorists who have sought to drive Iraqis apart and destroy their country. That includes the PKK. There is no excuse for terror against any nation. So let me say this as clearly as I can. The United States is not and will never be at war with Islam. In fact, in fact, our partnership with the Muslim world is critical, not just in rolling back 
the violent ideologies that people of all faiths reject, but also to strengthen opportunity for all people. I also want to be clear that America's relationship with the Muslim community, the Muslim world, cannot and will not just be based upon opposition to terrorism. We seek broader engagement based on mutual interest and mutual respect. We will listen carefully, we will bridge misunderstandings, and we will seek common ground.